Alrighty, hello and a very, very cheeky welcome to the first ever installment of the first ever season of your weekly spot for knowledge on scientists and philosophers. 50 the week, 50 the scientists. In today's episode, we cover the Malaysian scientists, one of the first to ask a revolutionary question. Now these are revolutionary questions, as we have found out, were not anything revolutionary at all. These questions were like, maybe we were evolved, rather than whether Zeus told to the king, and that the earth must not be held by anything right. Now this, this does not seem revolutionary, but it was. It does not seem, but it is. While these questions seem outright dumb and baseline kindergarten level, these were some stuff that stood with heresy in the olden days. So dear internet, today we start with when humans began thinking with an Alexander. He has been described to be the first person to develop a systematic a cosmology, that is a systematic philosophical view of the universe. He believed in the theory of Apiron, a theory that told that cause is limitless. And he believed that there would have to be a material cause to whatever was happening. Ancient physics was largely elemental, just the elements from the Nickelodeon cartoon Avatar The Last Airbender, but we can't have Ongs and Kataras going around just like normally, so it was far less fantastical. Fire, air, water, and earth were established and an Aximander tried to establish as to what caused these to form. As we know now, fire is caused by combustion of various gases, of which oxygen is one. And then water is essentially dihydrogen oxide, a compound formed of two parts of hydrogen, one part oxygen. Air is essentially a consequence of our atmosphere and the earth. Well, it was formed when our solar system formed from the remains from the formation of the sun 4.4 billion years ago. He tried to understand how evolution happened and argued it was a product of interaction and intermixing between species and that fish preceded humans. Fish did precede humans but according to the more commonly accepted theory of evolution the more recent ancestors of the human race were apes and primates, primarily the great apes of which there are only eight extinct species, humans being one, and here's what he wrote, and this was his theory. When things have their origin, then also that destruction happens. <laughs> now, of course, and then he continued to say, according to necessity, for they give to each other justice and recompense for their injustice and conformity with the ordinance of time. Now, you might say, hey, he talked about conformity right now. What is it now? So he boldly had a sense of non-conformity from the mythological fluff and nonsense that filled previous cosmological writers, such as Hesuid. He wrote that it, what is the oldest known prose document on the origin of the life and the universe. And Alexander was the first to come up with a mechanical model of the Earth. In this one, the Earth is held free in the center of the infinite. So geocentrism seems to precede Aristotle and his disciples, and believes that the Earth stayed in its place due to what he called its indifference. Aristotle, the infamous philosopher, said that this view was an ingenious view of looking at the world, but indeed, this was false. He first discovered famously that the Earth did not need something to be put on, and that it floated freely. This had been called the start of scientific thinking, and the first cosmological revolution many, many times. Apart from cosmo cosmological and astronomical thinking, he also sought to explain various meteorological phenomena. He concluded that it wasn't a divine cause that caused thunder and lightning, but the elements of the earth instead. While well, top in the cloud, ice crystals, the aforementioned element water, solid form, crashes and separates the positive and negative change, and when these interact, a lightning bolt is formed. It releases a shockwave of sound known as thunder. This can heat up the air in the cloud to 30,000 degrees Celsius or 54,032 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that one of the elements is really the cause of lightning and thunder. He had a unique theory of biological evolution where he believed that warming temperatures on the Earth found 
species like creatures emerging which brought with them a slight corruption of their species over time, which emerged into the land species of Homo sapiens. So there is this thing that it was the element that is really the cause of lightning and thunder. He also talked about biological ev evolution, and apart from the sciences, he was also an expert cartography, creating an accurate map of the known world. Europe centered in Greece for obvious reasons, Libya or the northern discovered part of Africa, and all but until around Southeast Asia. It was a good map for the time, he decided to create it on a circular metal plate, which is more reflective of the spirit surface of the earth than the conventional rectangle. And decided to put a ring of ocean on both its sides. He also performed experiments and scientific observations concerning geometry. He uses this to construct sundials to mark solstices and equinoxes, and he introduced the instrument gnomon to Greece. Many scholars, historians, and ideologues have interpreted his thoughts, beliefs, and expressions. Bertrand Russell interpreted Anaximander's theories as a code and an assertion of requisite of an appropriate balance between earth, fire, and water, all of which we are independently seeking to aggrandize the proportion in relative to others. Alexander seeks to express his belief of what that a natural order ensues balance between the elements that there was where there was fire, ashes, that is earth now exist. Frederick Nietzsche claimed that Alexander was a pessimist who asserted that in the primal being of the world was a state of indefiniteness. In accordance with this, anything definite has to eventually pass back into indefiniteness. In other words, Anaximander viewed all coming to be as though it was an illegitimate emancipation from internal being, a wrong for which destruction is the only penance. The world of individual objects, uh, world of individual objects, in this way of thinking has no worth and should perish, Nietzsche said. All in all, he was one of the first philosophers to write his thoughts, and one who brought the first cosmological revolution. His contribution to philosophy and science is immeasurable. Next week on the show, we have a name you probably remember from middle or high school. Bibliography. Bornet J. 1892, Early Greek Philosophy, 1st edition, volume 1, ANC Black. Evans J. 111, Anaximander, Encyclopedia Britannica. The First Scientist, Anaximander and His Legacy, 2011. Graham D.W., Explaining the Cosmos, the Ionian Tradition of Scientific Philosophy, Princeton University Press. National Science Foundation's National St Center for Atmospheric Research, Thunder and Lightning. Yuka Center for Science Education, Nietzsche F, Philosophy and the Tragic Age of the Greeks, M. Commons Trans, Reprint Edition, Ostagira Aristotle, On the Heavens, 21st Century Edition, 2007, 3rd Century BC, Russell Bertrand, A History of Western Philosophy and its Connection with Political and Social Circumstances from the Earliest Times to the Present Day, Simon Ashkrista, Fan K, what is Darwin's theory of evolution? Life science. Thank you, and I will meet you in the next one.